Welcome everybody, my name is Chris and today I want to talk about my recent trips to Scotland, about the gear I took with me and just a little bit of the logistics around it and more specifically I want to talk about my favorite lens, the 12-100 f4 IS Pro lens by Olympus and I'll tell you why it is my favorite lens. So let's get going. Before we start, I highly suggest you check out the episodes. Uh, there's a couple more to come, and if you're watching this a bit later on, they're all gonna be linked down in the video description, and I'll have them pop up right now up here as well, and you get a better idea of the kind of shots I took and um, just the way the trip unfolded in Scotland and what kind of obstacles and, and things I had going on while I was in Scotland. So check those out. I highly suggest you watch those before you check out the packing list and the, the summary after the trip, which we'll talk about now. This trip really was a last minute decision and I really wanted it to be as quick and compact and small as possible. That means I wanted to be light, I wanted to have a carry-on, so I was flying into Scotland, I needed to be carry-on, no checked in luggage, I hired a small car and everything just was minimal and all focused on taking all the distractions away and getting the job done, so getting photography done. For me that meant I wanted carry-on equipment and I wanted to have as little amount as possible in lenses and cameras and technology with me. I always find the more gear I carry with me, the more gear I take on an adventure, the more distracted I get by that gear. So I really reduced it down to as little as possible to produce, still produce the highest quality possible in episodes and photography. I reduced my equipment to one lens, which was my going to be my dedicated lens for photography, which was, like I said, the 12 to 100 f4 is pro lens and um, this is based on experience from past trips the whole of 2017 almost the whole year i spent on the road traveling constantly carrying all my gear and this is the lens i used for almost 90 percent of my photography and videography so it's really the lens that i've used most of the time so it was natural that for the trip to scotland i was obviously going to take this lens with me to do the job now i took a few other lenses as well and i took a second body because filming the episodes and talking about photography is just easier if you have one camera filming while you're using the other one so this was essential to have two bodies and the same goes for the lenses i did have some backup lenses again while i'm filming i'm also using this lens so I need another lens to record myself. So I had the 12 millimeter F2, the 45 millimeter F1.8, and I even took the 25 millimeter F1.2 Pro lens, which is a bit of a bigger lens, but I thought I might get some portraits and I just love it for video. It really has that beautiful shallow depth of field. It just produces a beautiful image. And that was pretty much it. The rest was some audio equipment, a tripod obviously, and most of you know I shoot with a video tripod. So my photography is mostly done handheld, even long exposures I can do with this lens we'll get to that later on and um, some battery packs to charge my phone um, chargers and I also took my laptop because I do a lot of work while on the road um, I just have to have my office with me so I really take pretty much all of that stuff with me hard drive charges and all that stuff now in general I think my bag was 12 kilos if you take the laptop out and the charges and stuff you can bring it down to 10 Still a little bit too much, sorry about that airlines, but it was still, it just fit into my F-Stop Ajna bag, which is carry-on compliant. So if you can get away with looking, making it look light, then um, I just carry that on. Now I often get the question from people asking me, what, sh what lens should I get? If I could have one lens on my trip, on my travels, on my expedition, on any way, if I could just take the one lens, what lens would you recommend? And again, it is the 12 to 100 millimeters. I've shot this lens all the way from the scorching desert in Namibia with sandstorms all the way up to six and a half thousand meters on peak Lenin almost the top of peak Lenin and in minus 35 degrees so it's really been everywhere and it's shot everything uh, I've shot portrait street travel adventure expeditions everything with this lens now it isn't perfect for every job but it is perfect if you have all of those jobs on your list. So usually when you're going somewhere, traveling somewhere, then you will do multiple kinds of shots. So this lens will definitely cover most of those things. So I pretty much end up recommending this lens in most cases. Now you can see I label my lenses on the front with a little sticker, just so I know when I have multiple lenses in my bags that I know which lens I'm gonna be picking up. Obviously that only works if the cap's on it, um, but usually if the lens is in the bag, then the cap is on the lens anyway. So 
It's a quick sneaky uh, tip there to get your lenses quicker out of your bag when you're in a rush. So a lot of people ask me, why don't I shoot with full frame, the bigger sensors to get more image quality when I'm shooting a lot of landscapes and, and for the type of photography I do. And yes, on some place that makes sense, having the best possible image quality, of course, is important. But to me, my lifestyle and my jobs and the projects I do always involve travel. They always involve being in, or usually involve being in an extreme environment and taking the image is more of a documenting process and less the art of photography and I think there's not that many photographers that actually do photography for the art of photography of maximizing the image quality. Um, a lot of photographers just do it as an excuse to something else and I think Micro Four Thirds is that perfect balance and it's, it's why I love shooting with this little camera. It's a small camera, it's just this almost natural extension of of what I'm doing. It just comes along with the on the adventures and I just take my photos, I make my videos and the same goes for the lenses. They're small, they're compact, um, the bodies too. And honestly, the image quality that comes out of this is more than enough for all the jobs that I do. A client has never complained, so why would I need a bigger sensor and carry heavier lenses and so on? So yes, Micro Four Thirds does the job even for professional photographers like myself. Back to Scotland. In Scotland, I also did a lot of the videography, a lot of the filming with this lens because it has the built-in image stabilization. Now, you know lots of lenses have image stabilization, but what's unique with this lens, and if you combine it with the EM1 Mark II and some other Olympus cameras, there's sensor stabilization in here and there is lens stabilization. And these two communicate and they allow you to shoot especially with the new firmware, the uh, stabilization has been updated and they allow you to shoot almost handheld gimbal shots. Um, most of the time, you wouldn't tell the difference unless you're doing extreme movements that are really where you really need a gimbal. But for most of my shooting, handheld shooting on the road, shooting the B-roll for my footage, all the videography, shooting while I'm walking, shooting, talking to the camera, all of that just looks perfectly smooth with this combination. So it is a killer combination when you're shooting video. Now, when we come to photography, same thing, the stabilization on this and here communicate to create the ultimate stabilization system. Uh, it's unrivaled, absolutely amazing. It blows my mind every single time I use it. Uh, I've shot up to four seconds handheld exposures with this combination and it just, yeah, it just works. It's, it's a sharp image comes out of it. So yes, this is the ultimate combo. If you have the one camera and the one lens and you wanna travel and you wanna be able to capture everything, these two really get the job done. In the end, what I really enjoyed about Scotland was the intention of going there and just using one lens to capture every single photo of that trip mostly landscapes. I did some portraits as well. I did some close-up stuff, uh, did a lot of filming with it too. But the real intention was to capture the whole trip with one lens. And I'm so, so happy I just took the one lens. One, it will challenge you creatively when you hit those limits, when you wanna go a bit wider or you want that extra zoom. You can use features on the camera or you can just move closer. If you wanna have a wider shot, you can do a panorama, stitch them together. All of that stuff is stuff that I don't usually do because I end up swapping lenses and I'll put on the wide lens, I'll use the zoom. But limiting yourself by using one amazing lens can really push you a little bit more creatively and it can really make you think differently about the way you will capture those photos. So not only do I recommend this lens to do everything, but it's also in my case where I've taken away the distraction, it's really helped me produce better images and different style images and just new techniques were applied to get to the end result. And it was, it was really exciting to play around with things that I don't usually do. And that's a result of limiting and reducing and just using the one lens. I think almost every photography channel will recommend at some time in some video, just take the one lens and the one body and just limit yourself and push yourself creatively. Yes, the 12 to 100 FYS Pro is now my favorite adventure expedition lens. It's been tested in the most extreme environments over the last year. This lens has been everywhere. It's never failed me. Same with the camera again. And um, yeah, this time I really took it one step further and limited myself to just using this. And I'm so happy with the photos I got. Obviously light plays a big part in that 
uh, as well, but I'm just happy with what this lens has made me do in Scotland and the result that came out of it is just, is exciting, it's exciting. And I'm, I'm really excited to limit myself with a different lens in the future and see what, what I can come up with. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're still wondering about the 12 to 100, yeah, just, it is amazing um, for all the things that I do. And if you check out my photography, then um, yeah, you will see how I used it. Also check out the blog post. I'll add a bunch of photos in there, all kinds of photos from last year, as well as this Scotland trip. So you can really see what I captured with this lens um, throughout a year of photography with it. And especially with the Scotland trip where I didn't have any other options and what kind of shots came out of it. Also check out the episodes. I shot everything with this lens in the episode. So definitely worth checking out if you want to see the videos and the behind the scenes of capturing photos with this lens. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. Give that little thumbs up at the bottom and leave me a comment below if you want to say anything. I read all your comments. I'll try to respond to everyone. And um, yeah, check out the blog post and I hope to see you next week for another video. Thanks for watching.